Chapter 18, The Balkan Pressure Cooker, 1912 to 1913. By 1912, the secret elite had spent over a decade in pursuit of their ultimate aim to create a new world order through the destruction of the old. The North Cliff Press was steadfastly preparing the public for war against the evil Hun. But no amount of propaganda would have the required impact of if Britain or her allies were seen to be the aggressor. It had to be Germany. The question was how. Both attempts at goading Germany to strike the first blow over Morocco had failed miserably because the Kaiser and his government agreed diplomatic solutions. The public was com- the problem was complex. Britain could not enter into war with Germany without good cause and the cause had to be close to home. There was no circumstances in which war against Germany could be declared in support of Russia. The British people despised Tsarist Russia. Would they be prepared to go to war on behalf of France if the German army moved to Paris? If the German army moved on Paris? They might, but the possibility of war was not sufficient. The secret elite needed certainty. Britain could only be brought in once the Germans had been forced into a defensive retaliation by Russia or France. Germany had to appear to be the aggressor. The British cause for war would be manufactured by German reaction provided their army advanced through Belgium. British and French war plans had since 1905 assumed that the Germans would do so. But first and foremost, they had to wait for a German response to provocation. The answer lay in a strategy that encouraged Russia to be aggressive and fulfill her historic ambitions in the Straits and brought Britain into play once Germany reacted to it. The cause for Russia would lie in the Balkans. For France, if it would always be for France, it would always be Alsace Lorraine. Britain had no just cause unless the secret elite could manufacture it. Though the Balkans was a little known, was little known backward region in the though the Balkans was a little known backward region in the southeast corner of Europe, fragmented by mountain ranges running in every direction, the secret elite recognized the explosive potential of Balkan nationalism and harnessed it. Many historians have cited Russia as the instigator and financier of the Russian of the Balkan troubles and its drive to push the Ottomans from Europe and Austria from Bosnia Herzegovina. Many historians have cited Russia as the instigator and financier of the Balkan troubles and its drive to push the Ottomans from Europe and Austria from Bosnia Herzegovina but they have virtually ignored or failed to recognize the hidden British influence the growth of national resentment across the Balkans against Turkey and Austria Hungary was deliberately stirred by agents of the secret elite left to their own devices Balkans country had neither the infrastructure nor investment capital to make the most of their natural resources Romania and Serbia were particularly dependent on international bankers, and as a consequence, real wealth flowed out of the Balkans into London, Paris, and Vienna. European financiers sucked all they could from the Serbian national economy before taking serious steps to develop its interest, its industry. The banks used local agents, influential politicians, legislators, and government ministers as intermediaries between the European Stock Exchange and Serbia. Leon Trotsky, at the juncture, at that juncture, corresponded in the Balkans for the Kiev newspaper, Kievskaya Missile, wrote caustically, "One and the same door here leads to a ministry and to a bank dicto- directorship." Trotsky's assessment was perfectly judged. Corruption blossomed, 
Government officials were bribed with directorships of banks and oil companies. Spending on armaments and the weapons of war outpaced genuine investment in Serbia's future. Used and abused, that was the fate of the Balkans. Serbia was groomed for a very special role. She was perfectly placed as, as the epicenter for a seismic explosion that would blow away the old order. With her many nationalists, nationalists, pan-Slav, and fiercely anti-Austrian secret societies, Serbia provided the perfect location from which the secret elite could activate the European war. Austria's annexation of Bosnia-Herzegovina in 1908 generated a deep, bitter, and lasting resentment amongst the Serbs, not least because it defied their ambition to bring all Serb people into a unified state called Yugoslavia. Serbia's long-standing hatred for, of Austrian rule grew exponentially from the first day of the annexation in 1908 until it culminated in war. The Serbs could never have waged successful war against the might of Austria on their own, but were assured of Russian support by Izvolsky who actively encouraged Serbia to wrest Bosnia-Herzegovina from, from Austria as their rightful entitlement. entitlement. Serbia's finance minister, Milorad Draskovic, confidently claimed, Our people have faith in Russia. It is said to us that we are merely Russia's army camp, Russia's armed camp. We do not take that as an insult. It was not by accident that Alexander Zvolsky played a significant role in creating these perilous conditions in the Balkans. The secret elite used them and their diplomatic and commercial agents in Serbia and Bulgaria to identify prominent individuals and organizations that they could influence. Far from being passive observers, the secret elite in London made certain that their agents influenced events at every opportunity. Received wisdom acknowledged that by 1912, Serbia was completely an instrument of Russia. And in one sense, it was. The instructions, the finance, and the promises of support all stemmed from St. Petersburg, St. St. Petersburg, to Russian diplomats in Belgrade, a state of affairs that seemed to underscore their commitment to Serbia. In reality, these Russian diplomats were taking their own orders. These Russian diplomats were taking their orders from men who we believe were controlled by the secret elite. As Volsky and his puppets, Sazonov, his, furthermore, the real sources for their slush funds could be traced to Paris and London. The complex change of the complex chain of command that was established extended to include one of the most competent and influential of Russian diplomats, Nicholas Hartwig. Hartwig was known and well respected in London. He had formerly been Russian ambassador in Tehran and was deeply involved in the successful rapprochement between Russia and Britain over their differences in Afghanistan. Hartwig was hailed as a diplomatist of the Izvolsky School and the pupil and alter ego of Izvolsky. In 1906, he had been one of the favorites for the post of Russian Minister of Foreign Affairs. But it was Izvolsky who triumphed, not least because King Edward influenced the Tsar on his behalf. Hartwig might have succeeded Izvolsky in 1909, but the weaker and more malleable Sazanov, whose father-in-law happened to be Prime Minister Stolypin, was favored by the outgoing Izvolsky. Instead, Hartwig's, Hartwig's talents were recognized in a crucial posting to the Serb capital, Belgrade. Bear in mind that hitherto Serbia had been viewed as a backwater, a small primitive country of pig farmers with a disgraceful history of 
regicides, and little in the way of valuable resources. Strange, is it not, for such an important and highly considered diplomat to be relegated to a remote outpost in southeastern Europe? Unless, of course, there was a significant task ahead that he was uniquely qualified to accomplish. Within a short time, Nicholas Hartwig held immense power in Belgrade and was considered by some to be the real ruler of Serbia. He stoked anti-Austrian ambition, raised nationalist expectations, and indulged in warmongering by insisting that Serbia had to become the Slavic advance post in the Balkans and must annex Bosnia-Herzegovina and the South Slavic districts of Hungary. The Russian diplomat Eugenie, Eugenie Shekling, Shelking noted that shortly after his arrival in Belgrade, Hartwig had created an exceptional position for himself. The king, Prince Alexander, Prime Minister Pasik, none of these made any decision without first consulting him. Nicholas Hartwig controlled and directed the Serbian leaders, but that was insufficient to realize his ambition. He gathered around him a viper's nest of Serbian mafi mafiosi and Russian collaborators, plot plotters and schemers who stoked the fires under a pressure cooker of disillusionment that was kept simmering near the boil. The Russian military attache Viktor Artmanov and the Serbian chief of military intelligence, Colonel Dmitry Jevic, regularly exchanged secret information gleaned from trusted agents in, Aust in Austria Hungary. Russian money covered the necessary expenses. These were unscrupulous men in unscrupulous times whose place in history had yet to reach its nadir. The inflated expectations which they raised for a greater Serbia stretched beyond sanity. Bosnia, Herzegovina, Serbia, and Bulgaria festered in bitter resentments. All could claim that they had suffered from broken promises, unrealized dreams, and unachieved potential. Colonel Dmitry Javek was known throughout Serbia by his nickname, a piece, the bull, a reflection of his physical strength and presence. He had been wounded in the brutal assassination of King Alexander and Queen Draga in 1903. In dishonorable circumstances, he and his fellow officers stormed the royal palace in Belgrade, shot the couple, shot the royal couple dead, and hacked them beyond recognition with bayonets before throwing the mangled corpse, corpses from an upper window of the palace. While this regicide shocked and revolted most of the crowned heads of Europe, a peace emerged as a national hero, an ardent nationalist and loyal supporter of King Petar, whose succession he had delivered. He possessed considerable personal charm and beyond the real power and influence and became the real power and influence inside Serbian military politics. A peace was intimately associated with the black hand, otherwise known as unification or death. The underground secret society dedicated to, to the destruction of Austria-Hungary. Despite the atrocities and the past history which left the Serbian monarchy despised in the courts of Europe, Hartwig praised Black Hand as idealistic and patriotic. As the founder and dominating spirit, Apis was the most influential officer in Serbia, encouraged and financed and protected by the Russian agent Savanov. Russian agents Savanov had placed Encouraged, financed, and protected by the Russian agents Savanov had placed in Belgrade, a peace was instrumental in promoting a type of Serbian activity which was bound sooner or later to bring about an acute Austro-Serbian crisis. 
the colonel of peace and his black hand, the secret elite, recognized and cultured the dormant virus that would, in one moment in June of 1914, infect the body politic. Hartwick proved himself a worthy disciple of Izvolsky by helping to create an alliance of Balkan states known as the Balkan League. Given that these countries detested one another, Hartwig achieved his aim in the face of overwhelming odds. The Balkans was a quagmire of ethnic bitterness, religious tensions, and nationalist squabblings that had festered over centuries of Turkish misrule. Whatever the apparent disinterest and the great powers feigned, that the great powers feigned, or the protestation made on behalf of one state or another, there was the constant whiff of rampant self-interest in the air when they turned their attention towards that region. The nascent states and aspiring breakaway nations were even more unpredictable, like jealous hyenas tearing into the carcass of a wounded beast. They all wanted either to grab more for themselves or stop the others from feasting on the hapless Ottoman victim. Despite their protestations, no one was innocent. As individuals, they could quickly be at each other's throats, but if they ran as a pack, these hyenas would be especially dangerous, dangerous to Austria. This was why the secret elite supported the formation of a Balkan League. Together, they were virtually equivalent to a separate great power. By almost curious coincidence, there was one other figure this time based in Bulgaria who emerged as if from the, the ether from the ether to work with Hartwig in creating the Balkan League. Preliminary negotiations were conducted in, in profound secrecy, and the promoters of the alliance employed as intermediary Mr. J.D. Borshier, the Times correspondent in the Balkan Peninsula, who? James David Borshier, an Anglo-Irish doc of Anglo-Irish stock, educated in Trinity College, Dublin, and Cambridge University, assistant master at Eton with at Eton with impeccable credentials, went on holiday to the Balkans in 1892, and within a short time became the Times correspondent. Borchier settled in Sofia where he found a role as an, unatta uh, as an unattached diplomat, mixing with heads of state and royalty. At what stage does coincidence begin to smell? This is a story that has all the hallmarks of the secret elite placement, of a secret elite placement. A telegram to Izvolsky from the Russian ambassador to Bulgaria, in Bulgaria in 19... In November of 1912, identified a representative of the Times who claimed that very many people in England are working towards accentuating the complications in Europe, the Balkans, to bring about the war that would result in the destruction of the German fleet and of German trade. Though not named, it had to be brochure. He had confided in the Russian ambassador and spelled out precisely the overall secret elite agenda without realizing that his conversation would be relayed back to his Volsky in Paris. The telegram exposed the whole objective in a nutshell. People in England were working towards making the Balkans ever more explosive to bring about war and destroy Germany and German trade. It could not have been put more succinct succinctly. Edith Turnham, the English writer and traveler may, who exposed many of the horrendous atrocities during the subsequent Balkan Wars, also confirmed that Borchier was deeply involved with the Balkan League. Like other contemporary commentators, she had no reason to suspect that the real source of power and influence lay behind Alexander Zvolsky in Paris from which vantage point he began to stir the Balkan, po the Balkan pot. As Professor Sidney Fay, 
the American historian observed. To the Serbians, Izvolsky continued to give secret encouragement, urging them to prepare for a happy future, a happier future in which they could count on Russian support to achieve their Yugoslav ambitions. ambitions. He encouraged them to regard it, Bosnia and Herzegovina, as the Serbian ally. Alsace-Lorraine. This was a particularly enlightening observation on Izvolsky's role in the Balkans. In Paris, he openly endorsed the right-wing government led by Poincaré, whose revanches held the return of Alsace-Lorraine as the holy grail of French foreign policy. He was the man who traded Bosnia-Herzegovina to the Austrians in 1908 on the empty promise of their support for Russians gaining the Straits. He had been quite prepared to surrender the Bosnian province, but somehow absolved himself from that responsibility. In 1912, he had changed his tune by advocating that Serbia seized Bosnia-Herzegovina, making it their Cause celebre. celebre. Consider then the midwives in attendance at the birth of the Balkan League. Izvolsky, who promoted the idea when he was Russian foreign minister and always the company man, Hartwig approved by London, sent to Serbia to strengthen control in Belgrade, and Brochier, a correspondent of the Times, itself an organ of the secret elite. The two unlikely bedfellows, Serbia and Bulgaria, were eased into an alliance that would not have been considered natural. The men who guided them had ulterior motives. They were not fired by nationalist sympathy. Summary, Chapter 18, The Balkan Pressure Cooker, 1912 to 1913. By 1912, the secret elite had failed twice to go to, to push Germany into war. The simmering nationalist tension in the Balkans were stoked by secret elite agents to destabilize the region and create a flashpoint. They set up a line of command that appeared to lead to St. Petersburg, but was in fact based in London. It was the foreign office to Izvolsky in Paris. It went from the foreign office to Izvolsky in Paris, Sazanov in Russia, and Hartwig in Belgrade. The Russian ambassador Hartwig was closely associated with Colonel Epis, Epis and his powerful terrorist organization, the Black Hand. The Balkan League was created by Zvolsky, Hartwig, and Brochier, three individuals linked to the secret elite. The League brought the desperate Balkan nation together in an alliance that threatened both Turkey and Austria-Hungary. Austria 